you, you want to help me out with Acts 5 today? Acts 5, yeah, we can hop on there. Amen. We're going to be in the, uh, the New King James Version. Hey, we miss you, bro. We miss we miss evangelizing with you, bro. Yeah, to come back down there. My responsibilities here have increased a lot, man. Seven hey, times. Hey, man. You, you, you've been doing a lot of pastoring and preaching. I'm doing more with uh, sound and media and um, more with singing. So wow, like 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 building a production team. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to pray for more volunteers right now. But yeah. Okay. And and um you guys have services on Sundays, right? Sundays, Friday night Zoom meeting, and uh once a month on Wednesdays. Are you coming to the Remnant Revival? Um my my wife works at 7 p.m. So if I do come, I it's gonna be like super late because I'm like an hour and a half away. So I gotta pick her up from work, but um, I'm trying to. Hey, hey, hey congratulations! I, I forgot to. Hey, bro, congratulations! That's amazing, bro. <laughs> That's amazing. Man, God, God is good. By the way, but yeah, man, if you could, um, if you if you can come either Friday or Saturday, just let Kevin know because um, we need help. We need help with the media team. Okay, for sure, man. Like, if you want to serve and you you want to hold the camera or help out in any type of way. Yeah, just let Kevin know, bro, and we could definitely use you, man. It's gonna be a lot of people. I think we're almost at eight hundred people right now. Wow, man, God is so good, man. I'm He's so good, bro. Man, <laughs> that is good. A lot of souls, a lot of souls are gonna get saved, bro. It's gonna be powerful. <clears throat> I feel it. I feel like a lot of people are gonna get saved and dunked in that water. So we're gonna need all the help we can. It's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful. It's amazing, man. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's, let's let's do it, man. You want to start us off in prayer? Oh uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead, Father God. We just give you glory. We give you honor, God. Thank you for your presence on the Zoom meeting, God. Right now, God, we thank you, Lord, for the for the opportunity to fellowship, God. We thank you for your Spirit moving in power in this church and for this church for this ministry for Pastor Rich, God. I mean, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for how you're going to move through Revelation and the Scripture, Lord Jesus. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone in the chat, if, if you come in agreement, put amen. Come on. Let's wake up. Wake up. Don't be asleep. <laughs> All right. Let's get it, man. Um, Let me just pull out the... I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Okay. Let me close my office door real quick. Okay. Love from Scotland. Where are you guys from? Who's overseas? Someone put love from Scotland. That's amazing, man. We got the nations on the phone. Oh, shoot. I got to unmute you. My fault, man. Hold on one second. Sorry, Kels. All right. On mute. There we go. All right. Glory to God. Cool, man. Cool, cool. So, yeah, we got London in the house, California, Belgium, Chicago. Wow. That's crazy. New Zealand. Man, God is good. Detroit, Sweden, Missouri. Wow, that's, that's Utah. Wow. All right, man. Hey, uh, you want to read uh, verses one and two? Yeah. Um, verse uh, Acts chapter five, verse one. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, wife, sold a possession. And he kept back a part of the proceeds. His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Wow, wow. So at this point, I, I don't um, for those who weren't on the um, Bible study uh yesterday morning, um everyone sold their possession and all their all their possessions, their land, their houses, whatever they had to sell, and they brought the proceeds to the apostles' feet so they could equally distribute it amongst everyone. This is the early church and everyone's coming together. Um the Lord is, is um is, is actually helping them out with this. You know, the Bible says if you give up things for his name's sake, you, you know, if you give up land, if you give up brother, sister, anything you give up for the Lord's sake, you'll be blessed a hundred times in this life and the life to come. Right, Kel? It's, yes. It's, it's biblical. Yeah. So, you know, at this point, you know, everyone was, you know, being obedient to the Holy Spirit and um and bringing stuff together. But this this couple, 
and Ananias and Sapphira, they sold their possession, but they kept back part of the proceeds. So they, they didn't give everything like they were like they like they knew they had to do. Go ahead. If you could read three and four, Kel. <laughs> but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it while it remained, was it not was it not your own? After it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Wow, wow, wow. So now Peter gets a word of knowledge. He gets a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit's moving. The gift of the Spirit, word of knowledge, knowing something about somebody that you could have not known unless God told you. And he, he pretty much told them, you have free will. You had the free will to make this decision. You had the free will. You conceived this in your heart. You schemed this up in your heart, and you lied not to men, but to God, he's letting them know like, hey, everyone agreed by the spirit. It was it was a command by God. You know, this is what God told us to do, to bring everything together. You didn't lie. You didn't lie to us. You didn't lie to me. I'm not offended. You mm -hmm. lied to God because it was a command from God. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the word of the word of knowledge. My brothers and sisters that's spoken about in first Corinthians chapter 12. I think it's the eighth verse. It talks about the word of knowledge. Everyone put in the chat word of knowledge. This is a gift that you should pray for. Uh, Paul says in that same chapter, desire the gifts. I think it's actually the, the last verse of that chapter. It talks about desiring the gifts, coveting them, coveting them. A lot of us want to move in, in the gifts, right? Which is good. We should. We should. I do. I want to always increase. I want to always increase in my abilities to move in the gifts of the spirit to be able to win souls, especially as an uh, uh, um, evangelizing in the field. I want to move in power. I want to move in the gifts so that people could but they want to listen, you know, right here, if I, if I, if I had kept back a portion, say I sold my land and I, let's say I made $50,000 off my land, right? Let's say I sold, I sold a few acres, made 50,000 and kept back 15,000. Like, oh, they won't know. I'm going to go bring $35,000. And, you know, told, told my wife, Hey, we're just going to keep 15, even though we agreed and we told every, and we were told to give up everything. Let's just keep back 15. We know better than, than the Holy Spirit. This is Peter giving that word of knowledge. It, it would freak me out. Kel. It would like what? How do they know this? It would freak me out, man. I would be sitting there like, I'd be sitting there shaking. What's going on? Like, man, they caught me. Like, wow, God is really real. You know, at this point, he's probably thinking everything in his mind. Like, man, this is crazy. Like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm tripping. And, and look what happens, though, guys. Look what happens when, when you, when, when look what, look what could happen. You know. And it's it's true. This is the Bible. That, that's what could happen um, to us when we uh, when we're given a a command by God, and and we we try to pretty much finesse God, or we try to play God like He's not all powerful, all knowing, and everywhere at once, like He doesn't see us. Go ahead, read verses five through six. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. So the husband, Ananias, dropped dead, done, killed. He dropped dead by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Like he, he died. He was killed. Jesus has the keys to heaven, to, to death and to hell. So no one dies unless Jesus gives the green light. No one goes to hell unless Jesus allows. No one, Jesus doesn't send nobody to hell. You send yourself to hell by, by, by blaspheming the Holy Spirit, by denying God. That's it. No, no one in hell right now was sent but to hell by Jesus. They made their own free will decision to go. So, you know, because some people, be, some people will, will tell you in the streets, oh, why would God send people to hell? You say, he doesn't send anybody to hell. He doesn't want people to go to hell. He wishes that all would come to repentance. God wishes that all would come to repentance. You know, I was talking to a brother yesterday, Carol. We went downtown, led by the Spirit. And, you know, I've been downtown there uh, downtown Orlando with you and um we haven't been down there in like five six months bro like it's been a minute we've been evangelizing and um yeah we've, we've, been, we've been going to different areas around the church in the papa and altamont springs just just kind of like trying to go you know just diff diff different areas and you know me and kevin were praying after you know after work um we left the office and we just praying god said go downtown and i met um i met a brother who um lives in la and like he knows kanye west and he walked up to us like he was a, he's a rapper a famous rapper 
and he walked up to us and he started talking to us and all this. We didn't know he was famous till afterwards and we sat down with him for hours. And bro, he was telling us about Hollywood and actually like the Nephilim and mm. crazy situations. He, and he didn't know they were Nephilim. He didn't know he didn't know what, what he was to, like what was really going on and the parties he's been in and, and like the satanic stuff he's seen. And it was interesting, bro. And I was just sitting there thinking, and you know, he, he's talking about how, you know, you know, he has the right heart and he tries to help people and everything, but it's really, it's really repentance, man. Like God wishes that all will come to repentance. Yeah, like regardless of if, if we think we're doing something good, regardless if we think that, oh yeah, I'm, at least I'm doing something good. God is pleased. God mm. wants us all to come to repentance. Like look at this man, Ananias. He probably gave 75% of his stuff, you know, who knows how much it was, but kept back, mm. still kept, still kept back, still, still kept sent back. Like imagine how important mm. that was to God. Imagine who was supposed to be helped from the money that he gave, you know, even the blessing. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You know, did did God need his money? Did God mm -hmm. need Ananias' money? It had nothing to do with the, the money. It, you know, God could do whatever he wants. It was the obedience. God God wanted him to be obedient. Mm -hmm. God wanted him to be obedient. And it's just, we sometimes God will tell us, wake up in the morning. You know, mm -hmm. wake up and do this. Go to the gym. Um, you know, I want you to start eating, eating right. I want you to do this. Stop eating McDonald's. Stop. You know, certain things, and we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, but a lot of times we say, oh, maybe that was just my flesh, or not, uh, God's not, God's not tripping. He, 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 you know, it's all good, like, right, Kelly? Like, it's all good, like, you know, we mm -hmm. all go through that. I've been through that, too. Like, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, but then God will confirm and do, like, in due time, like, um, I'm, I'm going to give you an example, too, Kel. Um, you know, the, you know that drink Celsius? Yeah. Yeah, the energy drink, yeah. So, yeah, the energy drink, right? So for a, for a little bit, I've been drinking it. Like, you know, I've been drinking Celsius, you know, at work and thinking like, you know, it's it's it's, a, it's one of the healthy energy drinks, you know, before I go to the gym. And God had really been telling me, stop drinking it. Stop drinking it. And I'm like, okay, like, maybe, you know, God's not tripping. Like, you know, I could just you know, drink it and just give thanks to God. And the Bible says that and I'll be all right. And I, you know, and I was straight. And then one morning, you know, I remember I woke up and God said, today, I don't want you to drink it. I don't want you to drink it at all. Like, and I really heard his voice, like, you know, like I really heard the Holy Spirit say that very clearly. And I, and I remember like, OK, I'm not going to drink it today, but I still did, bro. I went mm. to the gym. Everything was cool. after the gym. I had the most excruciating stomach pain, bro, uh, that I've never that I've never had in my life, bro. I'm talking about like I had it was cramps. I was like, what the heck is going on? I'm like, what's going on right now? And I, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, I told you to stop drinking Celsius. And I'm sitting there like, oh, my gosh. And I'm like, man, do I have to go to the hospital? Like, this is crazy. What, what's going on? And, you know, I just went and got like a little, you know, you know, a little Tums or whatever. And I was straight. But I was like, wow, like, I've never experienced this. But God really allowed this to happen so that I would really stop because he loves me. Mm -hmm. Bro, I completely, I deaded it. I was like, I'm done, I'm done with those Celsius. And I started doing research. And I saw like, and I saw that, you know, like, they say it's good. But like there's some there's like um some ingredients in there that even the NCAA had banned Celsius. Like it's mm. crazy. Like like yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like the caffeine that it comes from, the it's a lot of stuff that goes that that goes into it. I was like, wow, God, you really just care about me. You care about my house. So Everything. so like <clears throat> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it just it just goes to show that sometimes God's gonna tell us. Like I see someone in the chat saying something about dairy, you know, something about different things. You know, yeah, oh yeah, a lot, a, 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 I'm gonna be very transparent. Um, I'm like that with the with the congregation. I I tell everyone what I what I go through because I'm I'm not perfect. I'm not I'm not a perfect, you know, person. I I I look too. So if I could if I could sit here and tell you guys my testimony on how I messed up, it can help you guys too, you know. But yeah, bro, like it's really important this this chapter to know that hey, when the Holy Spirit tells you something, you know, be obedient. Be obedient to the Spirit. I'm not I'm not saying that you know oh you you don't do what the Spirit says you're gonna drop dead. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, look, look how important it is. You know, they were they were told to sell everything, and they and they didn't, and they held back a portion, and and they and they dropped dead. Now go ahead and read. Um, let's read uh, seven through nine. Seven through nine. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened, and Peter answered her, "Tell me whether you should whether you sold the land for so much." She said, "Yes." For so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, 
The feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Oh my goodness. Man. Oh my goodness. Three hours later, <clears throat> the wife comes in and lies. Like Peter even gave her a chance. Peter gave her a chance. She had a chance. She had a chance to be like, all right, you know, we did mess up. You know, we did, we did keep a portion back. She, she had a chance and she still lied, still lied. And look what happened. The same people who, who buried her husband went and buried her. Mm -hmm. My God. And, 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 and then look at 10 through 11. Go ahead, read 10 through 11. Then immediately she <laughs> fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all those, all who heard these things. And you said 12 too? Fear. No, no, that's okay. You stop right there. So fear is good, guys. And it's not like a demonic fear. It's reverence. Mm -hmm. Reverence. Like, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, right? But this fear that, that's, that's, been, that's being spoken about here is reverence to God, respect to God. Knowing that God, our Father, loves us so much that that we're protected, that we're, we're blessed, and we're a royal priesthood, and we're all high priests, and, you know, really understanding our identity in Christ, how much God loves us, forgives us, you know, by the blood of Jesus. But this right here shows that also, you know, don't play around with God, you know, mm -hmm. like have reverence, have, have the fear of the Lord, man. Like, like when we mess up and we, and we make a mistake, you know, you be quick to confess, be quick to repent, be quick to make peace with others, be quick to make things right, be quick to to call your brother and sister that you've done wrong and say, look, I'm sorry, you know, be quick to make things right. My, I, I don't know how much, I, I don't know how, how long I'm going to have, I'm going to be emphasizing this, you know, with, with the congregation and they know the local church here in Orlando, everyone knows that I emphasize that be quick to make peace, be quick mm -hmm. to repent, make things right. Because yeah, we could just be, you know, let's say we do our brother and sister wrong. For mm -hmm. example, we could go to God and say, God, I'm, you know, I confess this, I repent, I turn away from it. God, and I know you forgive me by your blood. Praise God. But the Bible says, do not bring your gifts to the altar until you've made it right with your brother and sister. My, bro my brothers and my sisters, this is the Bible. It's the scriptures. We cannot, we cannot sit there and, and try to justify certain things like, oh, I don't have to make, I don't have to make it right. I did make it right. I said, I'm sorry. You know, why, why, what, what happens to going all out to make it right? Like, mm. like, let's say we, you know, like just like having a zeal to make peace, like, having a zeal to, to go low so God could be risen high, so God could be glorified, you know, having a zeal to go out of the way. I, I, I gave a testimony recently about an old spiritual father I had in the faith when I first came to Christ that was very influential in my walk. It helped me out a lot, a lot when I first came to Christ. Um, I received a lot of impartation from him. He's an apostle. He was he had the prophetic um, the, the, on his life. Uh, I definitely was imparted to me. I mean, he helped me out with a, a lot, with a lot of stuff, and I had dishonored him. This is years ago. Dishonored him in the wrong, the wrong way. And man, I, just just from obedience to God, you know, I just always been praying. You know, I, I I I confessed him already. You know, you know, I, I and he forgave me. And, you know, it, but it's, there still was something in the spirit that was off. Like I was like, man, I don't feel like I'm reconciled completely. Like, I want to make it right. So let me tell you something, Kel. I, um, about a, two weeks ago, the Lord told me to, to sow into his ministry, mm. man. I didn't even, I didn't even know if this guy even had a, a, a the availability to, uh, I mean, the, the, the payment options. I didn't know if he had a website. I didn't know anything go. Mm. So I just Googled his name, bro. I Googled his, him and his wife's name and I found them on the internet and I found that they actually have like a whole website, like a little landing page and, um, and all that stuff. And I'm like, what? Okay. This is crazy. So I, I, I saw it, and God told me a specific number, an uncomfortable number to sow. Mm. And my flesh did not want to, bro. My flesh was like, man, you know, I can't afford that right now. Da, 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 da. And I said, you know what? Who am I? What's wrong with me, bro? And I started praying God in the presence. And I said, I'm going to I'm gonna do this because God told me to. And I just love him. And I just want to give an offering of repentance, right? Mm. But you know, you, you, know, you know, in the Old Testament, they would give different offerings for different things. Mm -hmm. so i just felt led to do that you know that by the spirit so i make this offering right and man it was so hard to even give it like it, it kept failing it kept failing and god told me to make a repentance video like even take it further go and make mm -hmm. a video a, a 10 minute video of my wife and upload it to google drive and then send the link in the little description with the offering 
And bro, the warfare to just like upload that was I had to go to a super target, bro. I had to drive uh, 20 minutes to my house, go to a super target, because I've been trying to upload it for like a whole week. Finally made it to the super target, right? Like where where, where they have where they actually have Wi-Fi. It took about an hour and a half to upload. I, I, I was just there with my children and my wife waiting, you know, drinking like you just just walking over just just walking around the little toy section with my kids and so uploaded it. Finally uploaded, praise God. Mm. And I was like, all right, I'm good. Bro, that same weekend, my birthday weekend, God told me, I got woken up by an angel, told me to urgently go to Moravian Falls, all the way in North Carolina, bro. Mm. Listen to this, bro. And I'm like, why do I have to go? It's my birthday weekend. I want to go with my wife somewhere. I just want to hang out with my family. And God said, go alone. So mm. I had another, I, I, had to, I had to be obedient, Kel. Mm -hmm. Man, is this, is this the voice of God? Uh, but then I got woken up so abruptly and heard the voice of the Holy Spirit so loud, I was like, you know what, I gotta go. I go to the airport, Kel. I go out to the airport, check in my bag, got there early, get to the gate. They canceled my flight, bro. Mm. They canceled. No other flight was canceled, and they didn't have another flight for another few days. I'm like, no, 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 no. So much going on. I got services, I got congregation, we got a lot going on. I can't, I can't have to go. I got to go. And, and bro, I got in my car. I kept them completely at the airport. We drove all the way back to my house. Got in my car and we drove all the way to Moravia Falls. I mean, I drove all the way to Moravia Falls. It's a 10 hour drive, bro. Mm -hmm. 10 hour drive. I get there, bro. And there's nobody out there. It's cold, bro. And they recommended, you know, you know, Charlie Champ? No, I never heard the of prophet. him. He's a prophet and he has a little ministry out there. Mm -hmm. And they had recommended me to go that, that night to go to a healing ministry. Like they had a, like a prayer night or whatever. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to go. I look him up online. And I see online, he's even, he's all the way in Nepal. He's not even there. So I'm like, why would I go? So the spirit say again, go, mm -hmm. go, go to his ministry. So, so bro, in complete faith, I go. There's like four cars in the parking lot. It's dead. It's a small little church. They got about 20 seats in the whole thing. Like, like four people there, bro. What am I doing here? Kel? Like I'm like, what am I doing in the middle of nowhere, bro? In the middle of the mountains. No one's out here. Well, like, well, okay, I'm just being obedient, bro. I'm praying in the spirit, just waiting for the service to begin. And I hear the greeter say to somebody, Hey, where are you from? And the guy says, Kissimmee, Florida. And I, I look over it and guess who it is, Kel? Mm. The guy, the guy that I sold into, bro. My uh. own spiritual father. All the way in the middle of the mountains, bro. He looked at me, freaked out. I looked at him, freaked out. I started weeping like a baby. We started hugging, bro. Like it was crazy. Man, like glory to God, man. Glory to God, bro. And like he told me about the like we we sat there and we just we just fellowship the whole night. He invited me to his cabin with his wife and children. We drank coffee and just talked the whole night. He told me about the warfare that he had getting there, like how someone had like literally smacked us, like hit his car, like his van and. He wasn't gonna come, bro. He leads um he leads the crusades in Africa for um for Nations Church for with, with Daniel Galinda. Mm. So like he's in Africa all the time. Like the past few years, he hasn't even been back to America. This this was his first time coming back for for a week, but he never comes back this long. And his wife told him that the Lord said to go to Moravian Falls. So they drove 10 hours from Orlando, just like I did, bro. And had the warfare just like I did. Their car had got stuck in mud, like like crazy stuff, bro. But uh -huh. they stayed obedient. Yeah, bro. They stayed obedient to the Lord told them. I stayed obedient. And look what happened, bro. Reconciliation, crying, deliverance, healing. Just, just, bro. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. like, like the Proving obedience, your faith bro. Is gold, man. Proving your faith is yeah. gold, man. That, is, yeah. <laughs> man, it really, it, 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 and that, and, and, it, and it, it, it was tested to feel like you said it. And then, like, my faith just increased, bro, because, like, it was so miraculous, like, so, like, just so worth it. So I say this to tell everybody, man, like, even when you hear that you, you, you're you you not sure, you hear the Lord tell you something and you're not sure, be obedient. You know, you, you know, it's the voice of the Lord when it's something that you know you probably need to do. You know what I'm saying? And God is, God is going to test your faith, like Hell said before, like, like fire to see if, you know, you'll come out more pure. You know, just like gold, you put gold in the fire, it comes out more pure. So, yeah, just listen to the voice of the spirit, man. Um, so let, let's read uh, 12. verse 12. Yeah, yes, sir, 12. Okay. 
And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Look at that. Man, the signs and wonders. The signs and wonders is, is literally is, 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 is what believers, us, us as believers, we're supposed to see signs and wonders happen. Like we're supposed to see things that, that, that increase our faith. Like, you know, the apostles were moving in signs and wonders. And this, this is the early Christian church. And, and we, you see in the, like throughout the, the book of Acts that the early Christians, they prayed that God would continue to do signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. They prayed for it. This is something they wanted to see because it, it would increase it would increase their faith. You know, it's important that we see that in the church, that we don't lose that, that we don't get religious and say, you know, the signs and wonders are not for today. You know, there's a lot of people who don't believe in that. They sensationalists. They believe that that it, all that has ceased. But there's no more gifts. There's no more healing. There's no more deliverance. There's no more, you know, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you know, that's that's to me, that's that's sad, man. That's that's sad because that that's one of the things that I know for sure increase so many people's faith is when they see the power of God move in the church, in the streets. That's something that, for me especially, like that that always increases my faith. It's always amazing to me when God moves, even when I'm praying for somebody, because I know it's not me. When I, when, I, when I pray for somebody and God does what he does, when the Holy Spirit moves, it always increases my faith afterwards, right, Kevin? Every yeah. single time, we, you know, we're never like, oh, yeah, I already knew God was going to do that, whatever. Well, no, nah, every single mm -hmm. time, we're like, damn, wow, like, mm -hmm. that's amazing. I never thought it was going to be that way, you know? So, <laughs> praise God. Praise Can God. you read 13 through 14? 14? Yes, sir. Yet none of the rest, yet none of the rest dared join join them. But the people esteemed them highly, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. Wow, wow, wow. So not so none of the rest dared to join them. So like the community of Christians, they had a like a reputation a reputation at that time, the early church for integrity. And everyone knew it was like a serious, everyone understood how serious it was to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Hmm. I mean, think, think about it, bro. We see uh, a brother and sister that we know, married cop, drop dead for lying to the Holy Ghost. What's mm -hmm. that going to do, bro? We're going yeah. we're to we're listen now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not going to try to overstep boundaries. But the fear of the Lord is there. We're just like, look, man, we, we're good where we at. And so God tells us, tells us otherwise. And because of the fear of the Lord, because the signs and wonders were able to flow, yeah, everyone was in one accord. The believers increased, increased multitudes of both men and women because there was order there. Everyone was in one accord. Everyone had honor, integrity. They were moving in, 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 in that one accord, that one mind and one spirit. Can you read 15 through 16? Yes, sir. So that they brought the sick out in the streets. So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Come on. So Man. the shadow of Peter, just the shadow, they would bring them out on sick beds. And they would hope that just the shadow of Peter might fall upon him. The oh, same man. Peter that denied Jesus, that denied Jesus three times. The same Peter that denied Jesus three times, right? Now mm -hmm. got baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the power of God, moving in miracles. People were being brought out to the streets in sick beds, man. Just imagine that, girl, in sick beds. It's just like it's like family members going to the hospital, mm -hmm. get in their family or going to the house. Get in their family member and say, hey, look, forget, forget laying here and being sick. I'm going to bring you out into the streets where Apostle Peter's going to be. And man, and I, and I know by faith, if he passes his body, you're going to get healed. That's mm. called power. Yeah. To Jerusalem. So everybody was coming from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem. Imagine the type of influence they had. Imagine the Romans, the Jews, how they were feeling. You know, they, they, these people are, they, Peter and John, these apostles, they're, 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 they're winning souls. They're, they're, people are, are, are converting left and right. Mm. You know, people are getting healed. Look at, like I said, sick people. And those who were tormented by unclean spirits. 
they were all healed and delivered, right? Everyone Amen. was everyone got everyone was good. Every the Bible says they were all healed. Not one was, was not healed. They were all healed. They were all healed. And that increases my faith because because I want to get to that point where my shadow heals the sick, cast out demons. I want to get to the point where every time I lay hands, I see a healing. I want to get Amen. to the point where every single time I say, I say in the name of Jesus Christ, come out. They come out. I want I want to see demons come out quicker. I want to sure. see people get delivered quicker. Thank you, Jesus. I want to see I want to see me lift up my hands in the service and 500 people start to get healed without me having to even say nothing but just be healed in Jesus' name. I want to see, I want to see I want to see the Lord move. I want to see the Lord moving so He can be glorified. So the fear of the Lord will fall on people and people will truly be sold out for Jesus Christ. So where I don't have to even convince people to repent. They want to repent because they see the power of God move. That's what I want to see. I want to see the power of God move Amen. in my life and others' lives. And so we can have reverence to God. I want to have, I want to see, I want to see a congregation in one mind and one spirit. I want to see people going back to the alcohol, going back to the vape, going back to the, the fornication. I want people to see such miracle signs and wonders and such power moving in a service from the streets that they fall to their faces and say, I'm never going back. And they never do. Because they know the power of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If any, if any everybody else in the chat, yes, the fire. If everybody in this chat comes in agreement right now with, with what I just said, put me, put me, because it's not just me. It's not just me that could that could do that. Everyone here could do that. You all have the same Holy Ghost I got. There's no junior Holy Spirit. There's no, there's no more mature Holy Spirit. You all have the same Holy Spirit dwelling in you that I have dwelling in me. He's a person, and through relationship with him, through communing with him, through getting to know him, through, through, through worship, through prayer, through reading the word, this is how we get closer to the Holy Spirit, and this is how we, the Holy Spirit will always back up, back up those who have intimate, have an intimate relationship with him. Amen. The closer we get to God, the, the more power, the more power he will manifest in our lives. He's the one that manifests the power. He manifests himself. He manifests his, himself in, in this world through whatever, through whatever, you know, whatever miracle. It's not us. Like just because I put my hand, just because I when I pray, if I if I pray louder, if I pray harder, it doesn't make the Holy Spirit move move more powerfully. I don't have, I don't have to tense up. I don't have to like try to tense my stomach up or scream without the Holy Ghost moves my faith. Mm -hmm. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So as I speak to the Lord and read his word and hear his voice, this is how I grow in, in faith and through faith. How these type of miracles can happen. So can you read uh, 17 through 18? Yep. Then the high priest rose up and all, and all those that were with him and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees. And they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Again, here we go. Here we go. Persecution. After mighty works, miracles, signs, and wonders, many get saved. There goes the enemy. Using the the, 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 the religious ones who didn't even believe in the supernatural at all. The Jewish ones that, that were, that, you know, the Pharisees, at least they believed in angels and demons. But mm -hmm. these, the, you know, they didn't believe in that at all. They were super religious, and they got filled with indignation, man. They got filled with jealousy, this hate, this mm -hmm. this hatred towards them, and and they they just hated the good works. They hated what they did. And they threw them in a common prison, and this was not the first first time that Peter and John had been in prison. We read in Acts chapter four, verse three, that they got locked up before too. Remember, with mm -hmm. the man that was at the gate called Beautiful, and and when he got healed. And a multitude came to Christ. It's happening again. Man, but look at this. Read 19 through 20, the angelic um, inter intervention. Go ahead. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. My God, an angel Man. of the Lord opened the prison door. Wow. Glory to God. Wow. Did God free Peter and John because he because he didn't want them to be locked up and he felt bad? No, he did it because it was a testimony. He allowed it. God allowed them to get arrested and then and then freed them because now 
what does that do? It increases the people's faith even more. Mm. He didn't say, they didn't say, okay, you got freed from the prison. Now go run and go run and leave Jerusalem and hide. No, the angel of the Lord said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. life. Go, go preach, go preach. That's what he said. Go preach, mm. go preach. Isn't that amazing? He, the, angel, the angel of the Lord didn't say, leave. Run really fast. They're going to come get you. They're going to come arrest you again. Just turn up and go. Ahead. No, they weren't. They weren't scared. Mm. They didn't move in fear. The angel said, look, here, leave. Now I want you to go in the temple and I want you to go preach. Man, if I was if I was a witness to all this and I seen Peter and John get arrested and then get freed and not run and then not leave Jerusalem and stand right back in the temple mm. and preach the gospel or preach about preach, preach life, preach the words of life. I would be, man, I would be sold out. I'd give up everything. I'd be like, man, I'm, I'm all the way in. This and is crazy. It all fear. Yes, bro. This is crazy. This is, this is miraculous. This is miraculous. This is, why we, this is why we love the book of Acts. This is why we love the book of Acts. Look at this. Uh, read, read uh, 20, 20, 21 through 23. Okay. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Wow. Wow. So, so, man. I, I would be freaked out I, if I was them. I was just freaked out, you know. And it's and it's honestly grace. It's grace. Like God is trying to show. He's trying to show. You know. He's letting them know, like He's all powerful. Like I could, like I could do whatever I want, and not, and, and they're not going to run because they didn't run. They returned and they reported. They returned and they reported. I mean, I mean, like think about the humor and all of this. Like the religious establishment. Like they 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 gathered. They gathered right. They gathered to deal with these troublemakers. Right. In quotation marks. Who preach about Jesus, and then they they try to intimidate them with prison, and then bring them to a council to put them in a, pro a proper place. But when the officers looked, they saw the prison door as it should be. Think about it shut, but the, and, and and the guards as they should be, but no apostles in the cell. Man, that's crazy. I mean, it's kind of like one, like a show, like a movie, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, like a movie, like like you know, like what where they at? And, and then they go find them in the you know in the temple preaching. They'll read twenty four through twenty six. Now, when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, look, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. <laughs> man. Man, at this point, people are like, man, they escaped. These are men of God. You better not hurt them. These are men of God. Now the people are on the apostle side, the multitudes, the multitudes. So now they are scared out of their mind, but they still, they still arrest them again. They mm -hmm. still arrest them again. They wondered what the outcome would be at this point. The religious leaders, they had to wonder what just like what they were dealing with, like what's going on. And this is like repeated evidence of supernatural power at the work of a follow of the followers of Jesus. Just imagine if you're a Sadducee, you'd be freaked out. But they still have all that pride and they still they still can't let it go because again, they're losing their influence, they're losing their power or their grip on the Jewish people because people are being converted. I can only imagine like that that their followers, the followers of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the religious people, the, the Jews, that they were losing their people. So at this point, they, they were they 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 probably were losing money, probably losing like power, probably just losing influence, and and they just wanted these people arrested. They wanted them gone. So read uh, twenty seven to twenty eight. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, "Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood on us." And I love how, yeah, that's, that's perfect right there. Okay. I, I love how it says, the, where it says man's blood on us. 
the M is capitalized. It's talking mm. about Jesus. Mm. You have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Imagine, imagine, imagine the gov like the like the local city council of Orlando, you know, arresting us um, and bringing us before you know the, the court of the downtown you know courthouse and bring mm. and bring us before you know they're saying you have filled Orlando with your doctrine and brought this man's upon this man's blood upon us. Imagine a revival sparks in Orlando to the point where thousands start getting saved. Thousands mm. upon thousands upon thousands. They get they get they would get pissed off because they're losing their power. They're losing mm. their influence. And it's the whole city of Jerusalem. Now now they're just they're pissed off. Read uh, 29 through, through 32. Okay. <clears throat> but Peter and the other apostles answered and said this we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witness to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. They preach the gospel. They preach the repentance and remission of sins. They let them know about Jesus Christ, the one that they murdered. Mm. He's exalted at the right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And they said, we are his witnesses. We are. We saw him. We witnessed these things. And now you can receive the Holy Spirit. So when we're preaching the gospel, we need to let people know about the repentance and remission of sins. We need to let people know that they can receive the Holy Ghost. We need to let people know that Jesus Christ has forgiven us of our sins when we repent. When we, when we repent, when we turn away from sin, when we say we're surrendering to Jesus, we're leaving the world, we're signing a divorce certificate to the world, a marriage certificate to Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God, we're now abiding by different laws, different commandments. We're not under the laws of the devil, the commandments of the devil, not Anyways, not smoking, not drinking, not fornicating, not cursing, not being like not being in the world. We're, we're divorcing the world and we're coming to God. That when we do that, when we repent in our heart, He forgives us and washes away our sins, and then gives us the Holy Spirit. We need to let people know in the streets when you guys are preaching the gospel. You need to let people know, know that it's your heart. When you change your heart to God, when you say, "God, I'm turning away," and you say, "God, I don't know how it's going to happen." I don't know what I'm doing, how I'm going to do it, but I'm turning to you, Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will fill you and change the desires of your heart supernaturally and give you the power to change. Mark my words, my brothers and sisters. You Amen. cannot do it in your own strength. You cannot do it. You need the Holy Ghost. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. That's why we're able to be endued with power. That's why Jesus said, Terry in Jerusalem, don't do nothing until you receive what you need to receive. You need to, re you need to receive power. Just like Jesus received power when he, after he was baptized in the Jordan River, he was in due with power when the Holy Ghost came upon him like a dove. He had the, he, got, he was ready for ministry, and that's why we need to wait for the Holy Ghost. We need to receive the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and then that's why when you tell people on the streets, when they look at you and they say, "Yeah, I, I, I want to give up. I'm like, I'm done with the weed. I'm done with the alcohol. I'm done with the cigarettes. I just don't know how I'm gonna do it, bro. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, bro. This is my life, bro." You tell them, "Look, it's, you don't have to do it." If you just repent and you turn away in your heart, in your heart, if you truly mean it and you say, God, I surrender, God, I need you, God, I turn my heart to you. The Holy Spirit will empower your vehicle, will fill you and give you the fuel to do it. When Amen. I got saved, God, when I got when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I had a literal desire to change. A literal desire to get rid of all my pounds of weed. I had a desire to burn all the demonic altars I had. I had a desire to, to, to throw away the sage, to throw away the crystals, throw away the Egyptian crosses, the, the, the statues I had. Throw away, stop porn. I stopped porn. I stopped fornication. I had a, a literal desire. It's like, like the Bible says, he turned my heart from stone mm -hmm. to flesh. It was like the one, the, 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 the desire I used to have in the world for all those things that I just mentioned, alcohol, everything, it, it changed to where I was disgusted by it. And I had a desire to want to see God 
that is the true evidence of someone being born again. Amen. People message me all the time, all the time. Oh, I'm smoking this vaping and I'm smoking weed. I need you to pray for me so I don't do it. No. You need to repent in your heart first and say, I'm done. And mm -hmm. I promise everybody on this call, if you go to Jesus Christ yourself, like I did, and you say, God, I'm done and I need your help. I don't know what to do. I'm powerless without you. I'm nothing without you. And I know mm -hmm. that you can do it for me. And I believe in you, God. Believe that you can change me. I promise you, promise you that Jesus Christ himself will fill you with his spirit and you will have the power that you need to change. I promise you, can no man, I'm going to tell you this right now, no man can, can change your can change you if you don't believe. Mm. If you don't believe and you think someone else's faith is going to make you change, that's not how it's worked. I cannot pray an impartation of repentance. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. I can't pray, God, make them repent. No, God has given everyone free will to repent. Some of you are still dealing with these things. I feel that by the spirit. Some of you are still dealing with the porn, the vaping, the alcohol. Yeah, come on, Jesus. Right now, I feel that by the spirit on this chat. If you're dealing with anything that you know is iniquity, meaning willing for sin, meaning you know you need to stop it, you know it's wrong, but you don't stop and you keep on doing it. I need you right now in this chat to say, I repent and put exactly, look, there goes already one struggling with the cravings for nicotine, but it's okay. You have the cravings and you might need you might need some prayer. We're gonna pray for you. The cravings, okay. That, that, that could be the flesh too, sis, okay? That you know, and and, and try, the, 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 that's why Jesus said, Lead me down into temptation. Temptation comes. Okay. Right. Hey, whatever you're repenting of, I want you to put exactly what you want to repent of right now. Amen. Put it. But whatever it is, I repent of smoking vape, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, Jesus. pornography. You guys, you, guys you guys know what you need to repent of. Garbage, man. What the heck? That was crazy. I want you guys to put it in the chat. I tried to mute him. Hold on. I don't know how you got it. Or how he's on. What the heck? Well, All right. There you go. So I want you guys, that's, that's, that's not coincidence. Put in there yeah, what, what you want to be lukewarm. Okay, hold on. Uh, what's uh, Salini? Salini, what are you repenting of being lukewarm of? Of what? Okay, praise God that you're admitting it, sis, that you're that you're vaping. You're vaping. There we go. Look at all this repentance, man. This is beautiful. Pride. Oh, idolizing. Come on. This is good. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Amen. Controlling. Amen. Amen, Alphonse. The Holy Ghost is definitely vaping praise god hey does anyone have a vape in their house right now if, if you have a vape in your house in your car pretty much in your possession if you have a vape put me put me put me put me because if you got okay oh wow 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 i want you guys right, right now to get your vape and i want you guys to throw it away someone said me in my pocket wow Hey, it's time to get rid of it, man. Mm -hmm. It's time to get rid of it. It's time. And I want you guys to do something, too. I want you guys to get it right now. And when we get off this call, I want you guys to make a video. And I want you guys to literally put make a video. Send it to your deacon, your deaconess, whoever it is, whoever, whatever group you're part of. And I want you guys to literally put it in the group chat and let people know, I repented from vape today. I repented from this weed. Does, any, does anyone have alcohol that they have? in their house that they know they need to get rid of because they can't control their um their drinking. Does anyone have alcohol in their house? Beer, you know, hard liquor, whatever it is that they that they know they need to get rid of. If that's you, it's time to get rid of that too. Give it up, man. It's not worth it. I was someone said how about wine? Let me just tell you something. Look. 
the Bible says that a drunkard will not inherit the kingdom of heaven, right? I was, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. I was a drunkard. I was. So now that I'm in Christ, I, I just have the wisdom to not go back. I personally, my own conviction is not to go back. I don't want to even tempt. I don't want to even like, I even try to come in and agree. I like, try to get close to that. I just don't mess with it. I just, I don't need it. Mm-hmm. Is is it demonic to have a glass of wine? No, it's not. It's not. You're, you're allowed to drink. You just don't get drunk. But I mean, my own personal opinion is what do you need it for, man? Sis, for what? I mean, uh, if, unless you're a wine connoisseur and you know maybe you're eating steak or whatever and you, and you like the taste of it, okay. But let me tell you something. If you're coming home after work and you had a long, stressful day and you're drinking your two or three glasses of wine, this is where you have an issue. Mm-hmm. Instead of going to the secret place and worshiping and praising God and praying, you're going to the wine. Now you have an issue. Now you have an issue. Amen, Grieve. Proverbs says that royalty shouldn't touch alcohol. Amen. Look, I'm going to say it again, Johnny. You say, how about wine? What are you drinking wine for? That's my question. Amen, Kathleen. Get rid of it. Amen. Praise God. Oh, you're saying you don't drink. Okay, cool. Look, I, I mean, I, I cook too, and you know, sometimes you use a little bit of wine for cooking. That's fine. Oh yeah, that's that's not a, <laughs> that's not a, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who use the wine to make themselves feel good. All right, praise God. We are gonna finish up. So where we at right now? We are, we are thirty three. Okay, amen. Let me. Okay, cool. If you can read thirty three mm-hmm. through, just thirty three. Sorry. Okay. When they heard this, they were furious. And plotted to kill them. So now they got to preach the gospel. They had no fear. They got arrested. Still don't want to repent. They're not listening to them. They're not listening to the Sadducees about, about not preaching the name of Jesus. They said they're going to preach it. Now let's read 34 through 39. 34 to 39. Okay. Then one in the council stood up a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the new teacher of the law held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Dudius rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men, let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God, man. Wow, wow, wow. So Gamaliel uh, is like, was literally a Pharisee. Um, He was a high-ranking Pharisee. He was above the rabbi. He was... He was he, he was a rab rab rabin rab rabban r a I mean r a b b a n basically he had a lot of authority and this man told him man we 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 know somebody that pretty much ro- rose up and and tried to lead and claim this and claim that and he had about four hundred people fo- follow him and what happened to him after he was slain everyone got scattered because he really wasn't sent from God like he said he was so basically this guy with wisdom with wisdom was letting the Sadducees know this Pharisee. That look, if 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 it is if it's not from God, it'll come to nothing. Let time tell. But if it is from God, you could be you could be found fighting against God. This guy had wisdom. Mm. This guy had wisdom. Because these these Sadducees were freaking out. They were so envious and jealous, like they were with Jesus, and they wanted to they wanted them to be killed now. Like they literally like, I want we want to kill these people. They don't want to stop talking about Jesus and take our people. And this man with wisdom stood up. I, believe that was that was the lord uh, the lord allowed that to happen to pretty much put them in their place because look it shows that god's in control they ain't going to you can't kill nobody unless god allows it so no matter how bad you you want they they wanted to kill peter and john god wouldn't allow it he used a pharisee he used a pharisee to confound them with his wisdom that's amazing can you read 40 through 42 yep and they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded, 
they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the council, from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy <laughs> to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Come Christ. Come on. Come Amen. on. Look at that. Glory to God. Look at that. They got beat. Uh, <laughs> they got rejoicing. beat and said, glory be to God. <laughs> we got beat. We got put to shame. Hallelujah, John. Yeah, we be lit. Let's go. Yeah, we be out. We're going to go keep preaching and teaching, Cal. We're not yeah. going to stop. Glory. Black eyes, broken noses. Beat up. Praise God. Look at us, God. We got, we got beat up. We got beat up for the glory of God, but they couldn't kill us. Mm. They couldn't kill us. And what did that do when Peter and John got freed again, 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 and pulled up to the house churches and pulled up to all the, to, to, to the temple or wherever they were preaching and teaching, and everyone saw the bruises, saw the, the black guy, the lumps on their head, and said, wow. And they're sitting there praising God like, look, we got beat up for the gospel, but they couldn't mm. kill us. Because no. God didn't let him kill us. And we're still going to sit here and we're going to cast devils out and heal the sick. Who's blind? Come here. You're healed. Who can't hey. walk? Get up. Come on. The people are, ah, Come on. Hallelujah. Man. Let's say, let's praise Jesus. Praise Show up and show out. God is not a God that wants to sit there and hide and, 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 and people doubt. No, God wants to show up. And he wants to show out. That's why we need to repent. That's why we need to give up the vape. We need to give up the porn. We need to give up the alcohol. We need to give up the, 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 the give up the lukewarm lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What's the point of it? Hey, what's the point of it? What does it do for us, my brothers and my sisters? We got to give it up. We're seeing miracle signs and wonders on Zoom. God is moving throughout the digital spaces. Wow. You guys need to let go. This is the, this is this is the confirmation that God is real. Jesus Christ is King. That's whom we preach. That's whom we preach. If you're with, if you're with us, can we get a, let me get an amen in the chat? Come on, come on amen. for the amen. Who's with us? How many people we got on here right now? Eighty-four people. Praise the Lord. For the amen, amen, amen. And my brother Cal, thank you, man. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Yes, sir. For sure. Amen. So, guys, what we're gonna do right now, real quick. It's seven oh eight. Praise God. We're gonna do a, um, a little altar call for anybody. That needs healing. Okay? Healing. We're going to do it again. Physical healing. People are about to get healed on Zoom. People are about to get physically healed right now on Zoom. Right now. So, if you are on this chat, on the Zoom call right now, and you need physical healing, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, in the chat, Type what you need physical healing for and put the pain level one through 10. Physical healing and put the pain level one through 10. So if it's a headache, migraine, back pain, knee pain, um, whatever it is, I want you to put what you need healing for, prayer for, headache, okay, seven out of 10. So, okay, Jane put headache, fibromyalgia, arm sore. Make sure you put the pain level, please. Okay. Okay, Nyla, we're gonna get that right. <laughs> we're gonna do it. <clears throat> we're gonna do it right now. Shoulder shoulder pain, eight. Knee and back pain, seven out of ten. Okay. Because right now, <clears throat> I'm talking about right now, you're gonna get healed. Glory be to God. All right. We're gonna do it right now. Right now. And then I'm, I'm gonna go inside the work. Praise the Lord. All right, <clears throat> let's do it. Let's do it. I want you to take your hand again. Take your hand, your right hand. That, that that hand right now. Put it up to the screen. Put it up to the screen. Right now. Put your right hand up to the screen. I'm gonna pray. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, that you right now and every brother and sister who lifts up their right hand for that for prayer that needs healing. I pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost right now will fall upon their hand and that the gift of healing, the anointing to heal right now will be on their, on their hand. The power to heal will be on their hand right now, Lord. I pray an impartation that not only after they lay, they lay hands on themselves to get healed, that they'll get healed, but that they'll start healing others by the power of your spirit, Lord. 
So right now, in Jesus' name, <clears throat> I impart the gift of healing. And anyone else that wants to move in healing as well, lift up your right hand. Anyone else that wants to move in, I'm going to pray an impartation as well at the same time. I pray an impartation of healing right now on every brother and sister's right hand right now, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Right now, in Jesus' name, the gift of healing be imparted on everybody's right hand right now. Everyone that's lifting it up in faith, not doubt, but faith. If you got doubt, put your hand down. Put your hand down if you got doubt. Put your hand down if you got doubt. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray healing. I pray healing. The, the gift of healing right now in their hands. And I want all of you that need that need that need prayer for healing to put your hand wherever you need healing. Put it wherever you need healing. Head, back, shoulders, knees and toes, wherever it is. Put your hand where you need healing right now. And everyone else that's that 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 doesn't need healing but receive the impartation i want you to when i pray i want you to put your hand up with me and we're going to all come in one accord and we're going to pray for healing for everybody on the zoom in the name of jesus christ right now y'all ready so first and foremost guys renounce any sin renounce it because sometimes people are sick because of sin renounce it renounce the vape the porn the lust the anger just out loud say i renounce i renounce start renouncing stuff really quick just let it go renouncing means you come out of agreement with it you know you're wrong. You've confessed it. You've repented. I'm re you're renouncing it. I'm renouncing the anger. I'm renouncing the lust. I'm renouncing this. I'm renouncing that. Renounce it. Let it go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you. You don't have to type it. Just renounce. Say it out loud. Life and death is in the tongue. Say it. Say what you need to renounce. And now we're going to pray. Right now. Put your hand where it hurts. Father God, in Jesus' name right now, everyone come in agreement. I command. We command. We command. Like Acts chapter 5, the miracle signs and wonders that moved amongst the congregation. Right now on Zoom, right now, Holy Ghost, we pray that you move in miracle signs and wonders. Your spirit is poured out on this Zoom call. Right now, I pray that you fill. I feel the fire, God. Fill everybody's room right now, Holy Spirit. Everybody, fill their room right now with your presence, your power. Right now, the fire of the Holy Ghost. May the fire of the Holy Ghost heal Everybody right now in Jesus' name, I command, we command all pain to go to zero. Everyone say this out loud. All pain go to zero in Jesus' name. Say it. Pain go to zero in Jesus' name. Say, we command full healing right now from the top of the head to the bottom of people's feet, to their fingertips, front and back, right now in Jesus' name. Whole body, be made whole. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Everyone pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's get praise. Full healing. All pain is gone to zero right now in Jesus' name. Everyone clap. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, main thing. I don't want you guys to lie. If you just got healed, go in the chat and type what you got healed from. If your pain went down, put it in the chat. My pain went from a seven to a zero or a nine to a one or whatever it is. Put it in the chat right now. Put it in the chat. Type it up. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise Jesus Christ. So That's amazing, Bradley. An eight to a one, a seven to a three. My pain is zero. An eight to a zero. Wow. A three to a zero. Soreness from working out, arm four to zero. Whoa, my knee pain, five to one, seven to two. Wow, wow, wow. Come on, seven to three. We're going to pray again. No more headache. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Look at that. That's a lot of, that's a lot of, oh, Rabbi Yossi. All right, let's do it right now real quick. For all those that are at a two, three, two, I see, I see that right now. We're going to pray again. Right now, put your hand where it hurts. In Jesus' name, all pain, go to zero in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All pain go to zero in the mighty, precious, holy name of Jesus Christ. Right now over Zoom, Holy Spirit, touch them. Touch them. Touch them in Jesus' name. Touch them. Touch them. Zero in Jesus' Hey, Kiara, Kiara Nieves, I'm going to unmute you real quick. You said your pain went from an eight. To a zero. Hold on. And um, start your video as well. I'm going to ask you to unmute and start your video. And I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hello. 
Hey, Pastor Rich. <laughs> How you doing? Can't I'm see good. you. What I'm happened? Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> it's early in the morning. So what happened? You just got healed? Yeah. Really? What happened? Would you have a headache? Yeah, I had a headache since last night. And what was the pain? It was, you said it was an 8 out of 10? E yeah. And it just went all the way from an 8 to a 0? Yep. Sure and, you're not, and you're not lying because, you know, the, the oh. Bible says lying <laughs> lying is an abomination of the Lord. So you're being completely honest, right? Yep, completely honest. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> you've been, you've been, I, I see you've been active on social media. You've been active in the chats, right? Yes, I have. Praise God. And where are you at again? You in, you, you in New York? Um, In Ohio. Ohio. I'm so, sorry. Right, <laughs> Glory be to God. You coming to the room? You coming to the room near revival? Yes, I am. I'm going. <laughs> it's going to be lit. Praise God, sis. You, yes. got healed early you got healed early, early morning. Glory be to God. What time is it over there? Um, It's 7 17. Oh, okay. It's the same time as us. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. God bless you, sister. <laughs> Thank Glory you. be to God. And we'll see you in a week. Wow. In a week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Praise God. God bless you. You too. All right. Guys, by the way, I want to let you guys know this. Um, glory be to God, by the way, for our sister in Christ. Let me um unspotlight her. I can do that. Oh, I think I already did. Did I? Let me make sure. I think I did. Yeah, I think it's good. So, by the way, guys. So, I'm going to let you guys know because you guys are on the chat. Friday, I'm going to make a post today. Friday is going to be the revival. We got almost 800 Almost 800 people come into the revival. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. If you haven't got a ticket, get your tickets now. I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a Holy Ghost party. Um, Friday we're gonna have a revival. We were gonna go out Friday to evangelize, but there's too many people. So don't worry though. Friday is gonna be a night of prayer, worship, Christian rap, deliverance, healing, soul save. Saturday morning we're gonna go. We're going to go and we're going to hit the streets um, at the basketball courts and we're in the morning and we're going to go play ball and evangelize, and evangelize at the park. It's a big park that we have um, close to here where everyone can join. We're going to even shoot a Christian rap music video. It's going to be powerful. And then Saturday night is going to be another night of revival, miracles, signs and wonders, um, worship music. It's going to be more worship music. It's not going to I don't think there's going to be any Christian rap. It's going to be more worship music. And then, listen to this, um, this weekend on Sunday, my wife and I had went to a, a place, it's like a food truck, food truck world. It's like a place 20 minutes from my house in Haines City. They got, they, they have like 60, not 60, I'd say like many, many different food trucks, like a lot. Like it's a whole community of food trucks and it's a big, it's a big area. It's a big lot, huge piece of land. And um, when we went there on Sunday, it was closing down. We had went right before they closed and the Lord had brought me to a specific food truck, a specific one. And um, the, my wife was like, why are we going here? I was like, because the Lord's telling me to go here. So we go there and the lady that's standing right in front of it she starts talking to me. She's the owner, the manager of the entire lot. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And she and she said, um, she was like, I I'm the manager. I own everything. You know, this Mexican lady, she's really nice. She only spoke um, Spanish. Um, so my wife, she speaks fluent Spanish. She helped me translate. I know it's kind of sad. I'm Puerto Rican. My wife's Haitian, and she, she speaks better Spanish than me. It is what it is. But um, she helped me out. And, um, yeah, the lady pretty much said Easter Sunday is going to be packed. And she gave us the lot to be able to, to, to do whatever we want for free. She's literally allowing us to take over the lot to take over the lot, man. Like, we're going to literally have the, like, like we're going to have the, the green light to go crazy. She said she's even going to shut down the parking lot for us and make people park far away so that they have to walk. And she said we could bring our microphone, we could bring our speakers, baptism tub, whatever we want to bring. So Sunday is going to be a night uh, or a day of evangelism. So Sunday at 12 p.m., Sunday at 12 p.m. is when we're going to... um. We're going to evangelize because there's a lot of people that are going to be there. A lot of a lot of different people because it's a very popular spot. So, um, yeah, I already seen visions of people getting delivered and healed 
baptized on Easter Sunday. It's going to be wild. So I'm going to release the address and all that stuff, Kathleen. I saw, I saw you ask for the address because honestly, I, I have to go on, on, on maps. But it's about, it's in Haines City, so it's about 45 minutes from the church. But I believe that if even just half the people that are coming to the Remnant Revival show up, that's a lot of people. And um, they're, she's happy because they're going to have business. They're going to have business. <laughs> Gretchen, Gretchen said, I think I'm in the wrong state. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to keep it 100. A lot of people moved to Orlando to be part of our ministry. Um, and it's not because of me or anything. It, it's just because revival is sparking in Orlando. I'm just being honest. Revival is sparking in Orlando. It just, Patrick said, I'm in the wrong country. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, revival is sparking in specifically Orlando. Man, you, got, you guys can come. Anyone's, anyone's welcome to come. Get your tickets, guys, because um, all the members of The Rock, if you're a member of The Rock International, we're going to have the, um, the front row seats at the Revival for all Rock members. We're going we're gonna to section it off so The Rock members have um, seats in the front, and we're going to move like a unit. I'm going to be um, really pouring into you guys. I want you guys to get active on Sunday especially. I'm going to be praying for like impartations for you guys and, and teaching you guys how to evangelize and and all that. So I'm going to be pouring into you guys. I want to pour into the international members on Sunday. It's going to be like a, like a family day, you know, Resurrection Sunday. It's going to be a family day. I'm a, we're going gonna, to gonna have fun. We're going to get lit. We're going to get lit, man. It's going to be, it's going to be powerful. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. So it's going to be a weekend full of revival. So y'all make sure to get your tickets, get your tickets, get a round trip ticket, find a hotel in Apopka, A-P-O-P-K-A, -A, Apopka, Find a hotel in the Popka, um, and make sure to get here. The 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 the, the, the hotels in the Popka, the Airbnbs are super cheap, super cheap, super cheap. And get something right next to the church. They got they got cheap hotels, cheap Airbnbs. Um, get yourself a nice little rental from the airport. It's not that expensive. You probably pay like 50, 60 bucks, maybe even cheaper if you get it now. Maybe like thirty bucks a day. You know. The airport is in Orlando, which is um, about 18 minutes from, from Apopka. No, not 18, like 25 minutes, sorry. We're about 18 minutes from downtown Orlando. So you can get, you can, if you want to get an Airbnb or a hotel in downtown Orlando, you can do that too. It's just more expensive. But um, if you get a nice little spot in Apopka, yeah, Spirit Airlines is cheap. It's cheap, man. It's like, I don't know how much tickets are, but I know that um, it's usually pretty cheap. Get yourself a nice little round trip ticket. Get Spirit Airlines. Get your, you know, just pack a, just get a, get a check-in luggage. I mean, not a check-in luggage, a carry-on. A carry-on's free. You don't got to pay for the check-in luggage. Just, just all you got to do is have three outfits, man. Three outfits. You know what I'm saying? Wear one of them. Come, 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 you know, come dress in light or come pack in light and just pull up. Well, let me, see. you know, pull up. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Man, I can't wait to see you guys. God is good, man. Get your tickets. It's in a week. That's right down the right down the um that's right around the corner. Um and yes, tonight is service too. So if you're in Orlando, come to service. It's gonna be a powerful service tonight. Um I'll be preaching. And uh and if you're not here in Orlando, make sure to join online. Get active, guys. For the ones that are on YouTube live, get active on the live. You know, get active on the live, talk, chat in the live for you know all the new people who are watching and answer questions, invite people to the discipleship course, you know, get active on the live. You guys are members, you guys are soldiers at the rock, you know, and, and help us out online. I got to get more active for praying for people online. I got to start praying during the service for people online. I want to get more active. So man, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for this weekend coming up and for what God is doing. <sighs> Let me look at the chat. There's technical difficulties for your dad. I, I wonder why. Hmm. I don't know. Would there be an online section for us in other countries? I mean, we're going to have the live open. Like we're going to have, um, we're going to be on YouTube live. Um, and we're going to, we're going to try, we're going to figure out bringing the, even on Sunday, bringing the live. I mean, at worst, um, we'll have a zoom. We'll have a zoom on Sunday. So where we could chat with you guys still at where, you know, worst comes to worst. We're really going to try to actually bring the live stream out there. <laughs> on Sunday too. Love you guys. I'm gonna pray. I'm a, um, 
if someone is no longer a, mem a member, can they still? Of course. I, I, I come as a guest. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Of course. There are people who are who have been recently kicked out of the church, though. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have had to Matthew eighteen a few people who didn't want who didn't want to report or uh, re re uh, repent of of pornography and fornication and certain things that they just didn't want to repent of girlfriend boyfriend type stuff and yeah and and we had to Matthew eighteen of course we pray for them but the Bible also says you give them unto Satan for the destruction of their flesh so that they'll come to repentance. You know, you pray that God will bring them to a state of repentance. And um, yeah, some people are not allowed in the church until so they repent. And we have a list of those people um, that they're, they they cannot come to the church until they repent. They have to literally repent. So, um, and that's biblical. That's what the word of God says, until they repent. You bind, you bind sin to them and you loose it when they repent. Matthew 18, go read it, it's biblical. So we love them. But if they don't love Jesus and they wanna go against God and they wanna be rebellious, we can't we can't have that that leavened bread. We can't have an apple, a, spo a rotten apple in the church because it'll spoil the bunch, man. So that's why we got to repent of these things. We got to we got to we got to grow in the faith. You know, it's, it's, it's not it's not this, it's not you sinning that causes you to get kicked out of a church. It's when you don't want to repent. It's when you think, oh yeah, I can I can smoke weed. I can I can have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, and fornicate. I can do these things. It's okay to do these things, and they don't want to repent. That's when it's that, that's rebellion. And um, rebellion is as witchcraft, my brothers and sisters. And we don't want witchcraft in the church. So that is good. Love you guys. About to go and work. The Muslim video should be uploaded soon somewhere. We're just trying to figure it out, the, figure out the right place to upload it so we don't get our social medias banned because you already know how the, um, the enemy works. I love you guys. Let me end this recording. Yeah, Rumble's cool.